The children's eternal rainforest forms the cornerstone of a 170,000 acre block of nature reserves located in the mountains of northwestern Costa Rica. These reserves protect all that is left of some of the most biologically rich forests on the planet. Outside this protected area, however, deforestation has continued unchecked. Today, the children's eternal rainforest finds itself on an island of forest amidst a sea of eroded and inactive pastures. This isolation is putting the children's eternal rainforest in jeopardy. For many animals critical to the health of the forest can no longer undertake essential seasonal movements to and from the mountain. Some of these animals are starting to disappear. If this tropical Eden is to be truly eternal, we must act now to establish a wildlife corridor through surrounding areas. We made this short message to explain why this cause is so important and to ask for your help. The Children's Eternal Rainforest is managed by the Monteverde Conservation League, a non-profit organization founded in 1986 by a handful of biologists. These biologists' dream was made reality by a group of Swedish school kids whose efforts inspired a fundraising campaign by children all around the world. It is not hard to see how these forests would capture the imagination of a schoolchild or of anyone else. Trunks and branches are festooned with air plants such as bromeliads, blueberries, African violets, and orchids. 500 orchid species, more than anywhere else on Earth, can be found in the children's eternal rainforest. These forests are the seasonal home of the resplendent Quetzal, a bird worshipped as a god by the Mayas and Aztecs and proclaimed by some to be the most beautiful bird in all the Americas. Hummingbirds abound here, creating a mesmerizing spectacle of color and movement. For half the year, this forest is also home for dozens of species of North American migrants, such as the Baltimore Oriole and the Summer Tanager. These birds risk their lives in a 3,000 mile flight to reach the children's eternal rainforest and the proposed corridor. What would happen if all these birds arrived here and the habitat no longer existed? Frogs protected here include the famous red-eyed leaf frog and glass frogs, so named because of their nearly transparent bodies. These green-eyed frogs, like a number of other animals and plants, can be found nowhere else in the world. And the children's eternal rainforest is refuge for a seemingly endless variety of invertebrates. Some, like these grasshoppers, this precious metal scarab, or many of the more than 700 types of butterflies found in the area are colorful and conspicuous. Others, like this praying mantis, or this leaf-mimicking catedid, blend in perfectly to their backgrounds. Others still, like this giant carnivorous snail, 
are kind of scary, but all of them in their own way are nothing short of magical. The exceptional diversity, uniqueness and beauty of its flora and fauna is surely reason enough alone to cherish and protect the children's eternal rainforest. There are plenty of other reasons. This forest is the cornerstone of the local economy. As the main attraction for tourists and students, it creates jobs in almost every field. This forest is an invaluable educational resource, both for tourists and local and international students. Another fundamental role of the forest is to protect the water supply, for it acts like a huge sponge that both collects water from moisture-laden clouds and protects precious topsoil from erosion during the area's frequent heavy rains. The water that dances out of this forest feeds communities and crops far away and powers hydroelectric projects that bring power to much of Costa Rica. This forest is also valuable to people far away from Costa Rica. Tropical plants are rich in chemical compounds that could potentially be used in medicines and healthcare products. To date, less than 2% of these plants have been analyzed for medicinal potential, and yet those few have led to treatments for ailments such as Alzheimer's disease and several forms of cancer. The medicine chest of the children's eternal rainforest has yet to be opened. And finally, of course, the plants of this forest consume vast quantities of carbon dioxide, one of the main causes of global warming. As a byproduct, plants release oxygen. It has been calculated that a single rainforest tree can produce enough oxygen for a human to breathe for 20 years. The children's eternal rainforest protects thousands upon thousands of such trees. So now the children's eternal rainforest needs a hand. Its isolation from other forested areas hinders or even prevents animals from moving on and off the mountain. Scarlet macaws, for example, formerly seasonal visitors, haven't been seen in the children's rainforest in years. The gap between this forest and the macaws' regular home in the lowlands is simply too wide. Jaguars are all but gone from the area too. Without corridors, this protected area isn't big enough to support a genetically viable population. Every organism forms a link in multiple chains of interactions. When a single organism disappears, all those chains are broken. There is probably no animal that illustrates this better than the three-wattled bellbird. Bellbirds arrive in the children's eternal rainforest each year to sing and breed. The male's call may be the loudest of any bird in the world. For female bellbirds, the call can never be loud enough. The bellbirds breed in the children's eternal rainforest at this time because this is when wild avocados, their favorite food, are ripening. Once this avocado crop is exhausted, however, bellbirds must descend down the Pacific slope where a totally different set of avocado species is just beginning to fruit. The same pattern is followed by a number of other avocado aficionados, such as black guans, toucans, and quetzals. Since most of the Pacific Slope is unprotected and largely deforested, these birds have to pack into the few forest fragments that remain. And each year, 
these fragments get smaller and further apart. Avocados, which represent more than 10% of the eternal rainforest's trees, depend on these birds, particularly the bellbird, for dispersal. If we wish to safeguard the long-term health of the children's eternal rainforest, we must look after the avocado trees. To nurture the avocado trees, we must protect the bellbirds. And if the few hundred bellbirds that remain are to be saved from extinction, we must build them a corridor down the Pacific Slope. The plants of the children's eternal rainforest don't only need a healthy population of bellbirds and other seed dispersers. They also need pollinators for their flowers. And countless pollinators also make seasonal movements up and down the Pacific Slope. Bees, nectar-feeding bats, hummingbirds, and butterflies are just a few examples. In a single morning, more than 5,000 butterflies have been counted passing through a single spot as they migrate up the Pacific Slope to the children's rainforest. The children's eternal rainforest is too complex to function as an isolated fragment and too valuable to ignore. By protecting some of the remaining fragments and reforesting links between them, we can put back what we have taken away. A wildlife corridor, a lifeline for the children's eternal rainforest. It might well be our lifeline too.